2021. All right, so um, we're just going to do a quick recap of the ones from last week, like super fast. So first up. Okay, go to Raspberry Pi 4 uh, beginner kit. Uh, it just has the Raspberry Pi 4 case. It's got uh, the Type-C uh, power supply. Uh, just people wanted a little pack of parts to get started with hardware hacking on the Pi 4. Uh, here you go. We've got an acrylic kit for the MagTag. It's no longer a spoiler. This was included in the Ada box. Um, and if you are jealous of people's uh, adorable clouds or jaunty crimson arrows, you can pick up this kit, which has uh, three acrylic parts and the hardware to attach onto your mag tag. We also added uh, a couple of these like FR4 perf boards. Um, great for prototyping. They're really durable because they're FR4. Um, they've got all the pads uh, labeled. Note that the pads are not interconnected, right? You just get like the raw pads and then you can put whatever 0.1 inch space parts you want in there and uh, you bend over the component leads to solder them to each other. We have a great video from Colin on how to use it. We've got from TechnoChic two kits. Uh, one is this adorable LED tutu kit. Um, it basically comes with the tool and the elastic and some th thread and some LEDs. So there is a little bit of sewing involved, but the sewing isn't too hard. Um, it's fun, it's creative, and there's a crochet element too as you crochet the um, the tool onto your very own sparkly band. Uh, thank you, Minerva, for... Owl not included. Owl not Do included. not order this and yell about the owl. Yeah. Uh, there's also a, a handy tote, uh, which we showed off last week on video. Uh, this one's a little more challenging. There's conductive thread. Uh, which I always think is a little more challenging than plain thread to sew, but you get this awesome tote, and it's got a pocket inside. Who doesn't love pockets? Okay, so now on to the new products. Okay, week. so uh, starting off, um, if you have a Microbit V2, the new Microbit, and you want to protect it, uh, Electric Freaks came out with a really lovely case, their modification on their V1 case, uh, now updated for the V2. There's a cutout for the speaker, there's a cutout for the capacitive touch, and there's a cutout for the microphone. It's available in two flavors. One is this translucent clear, which I think is kind of funky, and you can see the silk screen. And they also have smoke, gothier. So this is like two-faced. You have the light side and the dark side. Maybe it's like those dark sabers and light sabers. Both are awesome. I like the smoke. I like the clear, depending on what I feel like that day, it's what I put on my Microbit V2. Uh, remember, you cannot use this on, um, you cannot use a Microbit V1 case on the V2. However, I think you might be able to use the V2 case on the V1 because there's just like more cutouts, but it won't be as protected. Um, so it just snaps right on. And uh, yeah, there's a little cutout. This is the same and it's really slim. That's what I like. And uh, it's, you know, there's little nubs here so you can plug this onto. Um, uh, any add-on that you want or use alligator clips on the little holes on the microbit v2 next up. okay next up uh this two by two header is like you're like what is this it's a two by two header that is actually specifically designed to plug onto uh the poe socket of a raspberry pi three or four um some people were like oh i want to add a little lifter for a raspberry pi hat but i also want to lift the uh two by two header that is connected to the poe like ethernet pins um and they're like can you sock it and i'm like yeah i should probably just have that handy so here you go um only really usable if you're doing poe stuff but if you are here you go all right next up okay we've got a starter kit for people who want to make lightsabers or dark sabers or other glowing swords uh we have a couple tutorials with the prop maker wing we want to get a prop maker wing starter kit together you get a prop maker wing. You get a feather M4, which is one of our favorite feathers. You get a nice big speaker, nice loud speaker, a, a 2000 plus milliamp hour battery, an RGB button, an on off switch, a selector switch, and then um, a bunch of these uh, Pico Blade pigtails um, for quick connect and disconnect. And plus, uh, also, we get shorty headers to connect the feather and feather wing together and heat shrink. So it's not everything you need to make a uh, lightsaber or dark saber kit. You will also need a 3D printer or some crafting supplies some hand tools. Uh, you need to uh, have the force be with you. 
And um, you'll also want some NeoPixels. And we didn't include the NeoPixels, the reason being, Noe's really good at this. Noe not included. When you get this, you do not get him to show up at your house I would, to solve all your Jedi, Jedi problems. Oh, he's using, he's using like force. Okay, and then he's got like a bigger saber. Okay, so um, what? <laughs> we, you'll need to get NeoPixels. The reason we don't include them is because, first off, you might already have some. And also, the length of NeoPixels depends on your blade. Like, you have a really super long blade, or maybe you have too short... Uh, blades, depending on your style, um, we didn't include them so you could add on the new pixels you want. 3D print, solder this together, and follow our tutorials to make your very own lightsaber. All right. Or dark saber. Next up, this is a, a coming soon, and we're going to go over this in the uh, top secret, but uh, we now have it so you can sign up for it. So this is the cyber deck. Yeah. We have a cyber decks for the Raspberry Pi 400 hat and bonnet style. These are plug-ins onto the back of a Raspberry Pi 400 that let you plug in a bonnet. This one's short, so it's bonnet sized, or hat. Uh, we also have the hat version, so a little taller. And we also give you uh, some st stemma connectors. So you can plug in NeoPixels or, or servos or speakers. And um, we also have a STEM and QT connector in each one. So here you've got a sensor built in. Do you want me to show this off now? or? Yeah, um, I do. And then for top secret, we're going to play the videos because we like this all came together like, like last night. Like now. Okay. So, um, right, so this me... is like world premiere. And then we're, we're going to talk about this again. So we won't spend too much time with these new products, but okay, so tune in to top secret. Hold on. Hold on. Um, these are going to go really fast. So uh, please okay. go to adafruit.com slash new and sign up. Because this moment we put them in, they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone. I'm, I'm, I promise I'll try to make as many yeah. as I can. So this is um, this little extender. You can see all the headers coming. The, the headers get connected up through the PCB. Um, but what's neat is I got this custom made. We got angled headers. Angled, right angled headers. Super weird, right? And um, But what that lets you do is have the bonnet, instead of being flat out, which will just, you can't see it, or straight up where you can't see it, it's angled at like 45, 30 degrees, we're still working out the exact angle. Um, and then yeah, you can see the... Uh, Stemmas go through in. it. There'll be a bunch of folks making stuff like this, but we've got the angled headers, we got the software, we got this coming soon, you yeah. can sign up now. All right, so there's also the hat version, so I'm just gonna gently move this to the side. And I'm going to grab, and you wanted me to play a video on it. Yeah, I thought what would be fun is to play the uh, Cyberpunk 2077 trailer okay. on the Cyberdeck from Adafruit. Okay, so here is the... For Raspberry Pi. Hold on, let me focus lock. And then, uh, I guess... Now, if that was straight up and down, you wouldn't be able to see it like this. This is tilted. It's tilted. Because okay. that's what you want. That's what you asked for. That's what you get. Yeah. How do I get the thing? Okay, that's right. All right, so uh, there's no audio, obviously. No, we didn't. We decided since we're going to talk about this. Um, okay, so in this case, we've got a full hat size. This is running our Pi TFT, um, but you can, anything that is a Raspberry all the pins just come up, so you can use any Raspberry Pi hat, Raspberry Pi bonnet, whatever it'll work. And uh, it, it so many of our hats and bonnets and displays have LED matrices or um, TFTs or OLEDs. Uh, we wanted to make it easy to use and. While we were putting this together, we were thinking of a name, and we were like thinking of Cobbler, but then, you know, we, we were thinking about how when you put the TFT on it, it's like somebody said, like, wow, it looks like a cyber deck. Like, you're making your, like, it's like... Yeah, you're, you're and we've been doing it. cyberpunk, um, even before, you know, the game was announced a long time ago, but we've been doing a series of articles with uh, Gareth, who I worked with at Meg, and it just all kind of came together. We're like, this is the cyber deck that you're going to want to build. Yeah. Um, you're going to have this cool Raspberry Pi computer, and then you're going to have this other monitor off to the side to do whatever you want with, or like a display. So it's the CyberDeck. CyberDeck. All right. So, um, yeah, it looks like this. We're going to make it a little bit prettier, of course. This is a green PCB. But uh, you get two Stemma connectors and Stemma QT, um, yeah. and all the pins connect through on the back side, and then we'll have some funky... Cyberpunky silkscreen. Let's say if you want to like run a big old long ribbon cable, well, we've got that too. Yeah. So this is what we have in the meantime, which we ordered before we got the uh, the yeah. angled headers. So this is you know it's for the Pi 400, but you also use it for any other Raspberry Pi. It's just an extender. It's um, doesn't have a nice jaunty angle, um, but you can plug one end into a Raspberry Pi 400 in this case, or just like any Raspberry Pi to be honest. It's just an extender cable. And um, the pins come in one side on a socket, on the other side on a plug. Um, I'll show that with a similar 
similar setup here. So let me. Yeah, and uh, someone pointed out in the chat, you know, the the cyber deck makes you want to get a Pi 400. I'll, I'll say this: the accessories and the software and the code make you want to get a Raspberry Pi or be able to use a Raspberry Pi. That's the whole key with the Raspberry yeah. Pi. They they were able to bring something really low cost to the market, but but the accessories and the code and the things you can do is the reason that like we think folks want to do stuff. Um, because this on its own, it's like okay, that's cool. You know, it's a little low cost computer, but these accessories. And being able to do stuff. Yeah, it's moddable. It's also, it's yeah. one of the things is because it's so inexpensive, you're not afraid of breaking or damaging it. Uh, so in this case, I just have a regular Pi 4, and you see, you know, I plug into one side and then six <laughs> inches down, uh, there's a socket, and then you can just um, uh, plug in your favorite hat. It's just, it has the same mirrored output. One thing I will watch out for, because a lot of people have a Sense hat, and I wanted to uh, point this out. So the Sense hat... Um, you need to have this, um, like, lifter thing, this little, uh, if, if, you, if you have a hat that has headers only on the top, which some hats do, you may need to have a separate header that plugs in. It comes with um, the Sense hat, but you have to have that in because uh, it, this doesn't have, um, let me show, it's kind of a, it's tough to explain. But on the... On the Pi, there's nothing stopping like something from plugging in all the way, right? There's no shroud around the pins. The pins are just kind of like hanging out in bare space. Whereas with this, there's a shroud. There's this connecting piece that goes around it that is protects the pins, which means you have to have the pins, the socket that matches with it. It has to go deep enough into the plastic to um, connect with the male pins underneath. So this way it works, but you see it's like you, you're not, you're, you're going to sit flat against the plastic, not against the body of the PCB. So the only thing to just to watch out for is if you have a, you know, a skinny header, bonnet, or hat, you might want to get one of our lifter um, connectors, the 2x20 connectors, just to give you a little bit of a boost. But other than that, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a cable. Pin one, pin one, pin 40, pin 40. Okay, the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, our customers is? Okay, it's the LTR 390. Uh, it's a UV sensor. This is the last I squared C UV sensor available. Um, we've carried many I squared C UV sensors in our, in our times. Our favorites from the Vemel 6070 to, I don't even remember the ones before that. There was like an MC8511 or something. Um, but they all got discontinued. UV sensors seem to not last very long in this world. However, this one is available. This is a uh, true UV sensor. Unlike some sensors that say they are UV, this one actually has a UV diode inside of it. It is tuned to uh, 300 to 350 nanometers, which is about UVA. So what does that mean? It's good for telling if you're about to get sunburned. It's not great for telling if your um, UV disinfection lamp is working well. It will totally pick up some of that signal, right? It's better than nothing, but it's not really designed for that. It's designed for um, basically, uh, you know, health monitors that you wear that tell you, hey, you've got too much sun exposure. Um, that said, it's a really lovely little sensor. It's very easy to use. I squared C uh, has an intruct pin. It also does ambient light. Uh, and uh, we've got code for it in Arduino and CircuitPython. So if you'd like to do some UV light sensing, uh, pick up one of these breakouts, plug and play, you can plug it into your cyber deck. Ooh.